Uh, due to complications, I haven't been able to work on the assets that I want to do for my videos. So for right now, I just want to talk about the manga I've been reading currently, my thoughts on them, spoilers obviously, so I will be putting timestamps if you want to hear my specific thoughts on a manga. Also, no script, as you can tell, I am stuttering and muttering over my words, but we'll make it through, I promise, okay? So, let's get started. And you know, let's start off with the big one. My Hero Academia has ended, now obviously I'm going by the TCB scans, but obviously I'll read the officials when they come out. So that's all fine and dandy. When it comes to My Hero Academia though, without going too much into it, because I do want to make a video on this story, I kind of feel like it was a solid 6 or 7 out of 10 in my personal opinion. Here's the thing. I originally loved My Hero Academia, but I gave up on it because that beginning is so strong. Okay, the start of My Hero is a very, very strong start. You love Deku. You love All Might. You love all these characters. The way Deku just overcomes the challenges through the tournament, we'll say, and how Deku, you know, as a no he's basically a human, okay? Like, yes, he does have a quirk that was given to him by All Might that he trained for, but he still has to rely on his natural body because at this moment, he can't be expelling a one for all's use because it damages his body. So he has to overcome these challenges without utilizing his powers too much because obviously he doesn't want to damage himself. That start is so good, man. It's so good. But then you get that middle segment, right? So like after the kids, you know, all of them get in their classes and whatnot, once all that's done and over with, I don't know, like it just doesn't feel the same. I don't know how else to describe it, but I feel like a lot of what happens between the beginning of the story and the end is sort of middling. I don't think Deku is basically the same character as he was in the beginning. I feel like he changes. I think the writing for My Hero kind of de degrades. Like, I don't know if Horikoshi ever planned on getting farther than the tournament. Like, like obviously there was a plan from beginning to end, but I mean the dialogue, like how these circumstances would end up playing as what I feel wasn't all that well planned into. Like the villains are great. The villains throughout the story is great, but the hero side of things, I'm very disappointed by. So um, for the ending, I thought it was good. I thought it made sense. It was pretty predictable on how the story would end there, but I'm happy with it. Do I think My Hero Academia is like the greatest story ever told? No. Would I recommend it to someone? Maybe. If you like superhero genres, I would recommend it. But if you're looking for like the most super in-depth story, I don't think you're really going to get it from My Hero. It's just, it's a fun read, okay? And despite what I feel about Deku, I think All Might is absolutely the best character in My Hero Academia. That is never an issue with All Might. He is the best character start to finish any scene he's in is automatically a top tier like scene his dialogue how he interacts with other characters especially his dialogue with stain for example that was very interesting so i think all might is really great especially with his final battle is oh my goodness like he is easily my favorite character in my hero academia and like i want to love deku and the rest of the cast but as of right now i think my hero academia it had a good ending I will say that. I think it had a good ending. Now, if you thought my opinion on My Hero Academia was whack, this next one might be a little more divisive with JJK. I'm going to be honest. I don't think JJK is all that great. This is what I think JJK is, okay? JJK is a manga that has these amazing moments, these hype moments, okay? And don't get me wrong. Those fights, oh, I can't wait to see them be animated. But that's the thing, right? I'm looking forward to these big moments in JJK because everything that happens in between those awesome segments I mean who cares I don't care I don't really care what happens to any of the characters besides Yuji because well Yuji is the only one we've really stuck to Choso obviously was another character I, I, I kind of miss even now because he was another character that we'd stuck with for a long haul and now he's gone and I just feel like this whole oh you know, we'll kill off characters because they mean something to people. I just think it's terrible. Like Nobara, right? Nobara's confirmed dead. 
But you gave us like this hope that she might return. Why would you even give an inkling of hope? Secondly, we didn't get a scene later where it's like a confirmed death. Like, oh, she, you know, unfortunately, Yuji, we couldn't have saved her. You know, it is what it is. No. And I just feel like a lot of moments in JJK, you know, everything that happens in between the fights and all those crazy moments like domain expansion, you know, all those in between just make me upset. Like, I want more from the story, but I feel like we get no downtime, no real interactions between characters. It's just one story point to another story point, and it's action, action, action. There's dialogue here and there. There's like a bit of downtime, but that bit of downtime doesn't do anything for me personally. Okay, and I and I know there's people that love JJK. Okay, they'll stand by JJK and they love the characters, but for me, besides Yuji, like I said. And uh, Gojo, because I, I understand Gojo's whole thing. And I feel bad for him, you know. He is a he is a very uh, pitiful character, despite being the strongest, right? But that's how everyone viewed him as. Is that, besides those two, and maybe Suk, because Suk is funny. That's what I would call Sukuna. I feel nothing for any of the characters in JJK, right? Like, for example, like with Megami, right? Megami lost a lot, right? And that's how Suk got him, right? But then, like, every other character's lost stuff, too. And he wasn't afraid to pull the trigger on Yuji when Yuji got one of Suk's figures. So all this dude Yuji is asking for is, hey, man, I just grab my hand. You know, if you want to sulk, you can sulk. But you got to grab my hand because otherwise everyone here is going to die. And Megumi's like, <laughs> but my sister, though. <laughs> You know, obviously it was out of his control. And and like I said, you know, those are important characters to him. But for me, I don't have any attachment to this Megami dude. Okay? I just don't. And that's what I feel for like a ton of the characters. Like Nobara, Nobara shouldn't have died. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Nobara shouldn't have died. There's no reason to tease the possibility of her return. She shouldn't have died. Okay? She should have returned. Maybe she could have died in the Sook battle. But... At the very least, she shouldn't have been like, oh, oh, maybe there's a chance. Or at the very least, we could have gotten a scene that's just like, oh, you know, Nobara, we couldn't save her, unfortunately, you know, and, and we deal with the grief of that, but we we don't get downtime. And that's why I feel like JJK, at least in my opinion, is one of the worst mangas I've ever read. Because I'm not happy. Okay? I'm not happy. I'm not sad. I don't feel anything. Until we get to those hype moments where we're like, Yeah! Gojo versus Suk! Uh, Big Raga! Uh, all I hear is, Suk gonna fight a new person. Again! 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 You know what I mean? Like, there's these awesome moments that appear here and there. But ultimately, I don't care what happens to any of the characters. Because I don't feel for anyone. Besides Yuji and Gojo. That's it. And even with Gojo, I'd hardly say I feel really felt bad okay i'm gonna be honest i could hardly say i do <laughs> that's the thing like character deaths mean something when you spend time with a character and when they matter but i i feel like gay gay wrote characters thinking that they'll be beloved and you'll see fan bases you'll see people being like i love this character i love that character oh i stand this character but because gay gay sees oh People love this character, even a slightly bit, even like their niche fan bases. <laughs> Time to kill them. <laughs> and that's what I feel about JJK. Okay, so JJK, sorry, not sorry. It disappoints me greatly. I I love the power system. I love all of it. I love how domain expressions work, you know, and all that. But I just feel like there's no moments for characters to grow in my opinion besides yuji yuji is like pretty much like the only one at least that's how i view it personally okay you can disagree but like i said it's really just yuji for me and and that's it and i read jjk twice um because i wanted to see if like my opinions were valid like because i see so many people love this manga so i feel like i'm pressured to love it too but i just can't Okay, but now I feel like, you know, we've talked about some battle shonens. Let's go to a rom-com for it now. Okay, so Nagatoro, okay, don't toy with me, Miss Nagatoro, had ended 
And uh, I will say this about the story, okay? For what it is, I think it's perfectly fine. It is not the greatest thing I've ever read, but it's not as terrible as people make it out to be, right? A lot of people point to the beginning of the stories and instances in the beginning where uh, Hayase bullies Naoto, right? I'll use their names for this video because I already said spoilers, so who cares? But I feel like a lot, and this is this I feel happens with like Undead Unluck, which we'll talk about later, but I feel like a lot of people bring up instances in the beginning, right? That were seemingly bad, okay? Or were bad. We'll get to there when we get there, but um, but people use these as examples of like, oh, like weirdos read this and whatnot. Okay, and look, it's perfectly fine if you think that. But my personal opinion, I think the story, especially like once you leave that beginning segment, everything that happens like between our main two protagonists, it just, it, it's good. It feels nice, okay? It doesn't feel annoying. Like obviously how, um, how high I say response to Naoto, how she interacts with him, can sometimes be obnoxious and annoying, but I don't think it's overbearing like how it is in the beginning, right? With a lot of the gags and all that. And there are gags that happen, obviously, like way later in the story, and like it's still trying to be a rom-com. And there are definitely instances where I was a little upset, like I believe it was the um, official dating, right? Where uh, Naoto officially asks Hayase, hey, you know, can we just chill? Could you be my girlfriend? She says, yeah. And then they're walking on the beach. And then he tries to kiss her. And then just throws him down on the ground. Okay. And that kind of ruined it a little bit. <laughs> I mean, it was kind of funny, but still. Because, obviously, our character here, Hayase, she's not very good with social interactions. Right? She's mainly, she's mainly with her friends. And that's it. And, like, then this... Do with glasses, who's a little bit of an artist, just waltz in and change your whole life. That's pretty cool. But again, I don't think if if like you are one of those people that saw these posts on Twitter and just like, oh, I'm never gonna read this. I'd look, that's perfectly fine. But if you are ever at all interested, I would say read it. I would say it's not the worst thing you'll ever read. It's not the greatest thing you'll ever read, but it's a good story and. I will miss it, and I do enjoy the characters and where they ended up by the end of the story. I can at least appreciate when an author just like, you know, I'm kind of satisfied with where this ends. I don't want to drag it on because, you know, a lot of times people will drag on their stories and it will be way worse than what it is. So I'm glad where it ended where it ended, and I think it was satisfactory. Okay, so again... If you thought this was like one of those weirder stories, I don't blame you for feeling that way, but give it another chance if you haven't already. Okay, I definitely think it's worth it. Now, continuing on um, the rom-com sort of things, there is uh, 365 Days to the Wedding. Another good story, really good story. I highly recommend. I'll give you the plot synopsis if you haven't read it already. Basically, um, we have these two characters who both work in the same company, and... The company is looking for a single person to send all the way to a different part of the country. Um, I forgot where it was. It's been a while since I read the story. But neither of these two characters want their lives to be disturbed by this trip. So they plan a fake marriage. That way, they neither of them go on this trip and can live their peaceful lives. But over time, they do grow feelings for each other. And... It's not one of those things where it just drags on and drags on and drags on. It, It is, you know, it's a pretty long story. And we basically see how these two characters, you know, they sort of fumble their way throughout this fake marriage experience to actually dating, to how their dating life is affecting them and the people around them, etc. And obviously the final chapter is the actual wedding itself, but... I'd highly recommend it if you haven't already. It's just, again, another good story. There's no gags or any weird things like that. So, again, highly suggest you read it. I even cared about some of the side characters. So, that was, it was a good story. It was a good read. Highly recommend. And for our last sort of slice of life, well, I mean, this one could turn dark. Who knows? But uh, for right now, it's pretty relaxing. And that is, it's a very new one, okay? Only nine chapters in. 
Maybe there's porn that haven't been translated yet, as far as I'm aware, but I don't know. And that being, the demon queen can't defeat the hero, okay? It's a very wholesome story, okay? I don't want to get into it because, it's again, it's so short. Like, you could keep up right now. But all you really need to know is that you have your main protagonist, you, okay? And you have the demon queen, okay? And he sees the demon queen, and he's like, this is my teacher now, okay? And even though she's the demon queen and knows how, you know, she gotta, she gotta kill this kid, because he's a kid, right? She just, oh, but I love this kid. And I'm gonna treat him like a son or whatever. But it's like, oh, like, it's kind of... It, it's kind of like this back and forth with her and how she feels what she personally feels is right versus like her duties as a queen sort of deal. I really recommend it. Very wholesome. I love it. I really do love it. Okay. Great stories. But uh, yeah, now let's get back to the shonen genre. Okay. All right. So now we're moving to Sakamoto days and look, I'll just say this, you know, it's getting anime, so I don't want to talk too much about it, but Lou. Okay. Lou, they promoted Lou. Who's Lou? I don't know Lou. Lou is a character that peaked 10 chapters in and isn't a character anymore. Who's that? What? She makes cameos here and there? Uh, what? Uh, I, I don't see her. I don't know if she exists. I think she's dead. I think Big Raga killed her because even in the latest chapter where she makes a cameo, okay, and I say it's a cameo because that's what it is, Sakamoto's like, hmm, I really need to bring out the potential in these other two pupils that I have. <laughs> like, Lou is a capable fighter, okay? She's a capable fighter, she can fight, but yet her only existence in the story is so that another character who is interested in her can give information to them. That is her only role in the story. She does nothing. And yes, you could say, oh, well, a lot of her story is just protecting like the wife. We don't know if Sakamoto's wife and kid is in danger and if Lou is the one protecting them. We don't know that because it's never been said. It's never been said outright. Okay, so, as far as I'm aware, she's just running the shop, and that's it, and she's a wasted character. And whilst I would love to talk more about Sakamoto Days at the moment, I just feel like, you know, it's getting anime, so I'd rather people just watch it if they haven't already. It's a good story, outside of Lou. Like, it just infuriates me, because I don't like wasting time with characters if you're not going to do anything with them. That's just my personal opinion. That's just it, okay? Alright. You know, like, it kind of feels like Mama Yuyu. Okay, it was like another new story. It popped out at the same time as Kagurabachi. And that story literally died. Okay, when all they needed to do, that's what my opinion is, they should have just focused on the hero and the mom. But no, like, even though the character's name was in the title, right, well, technically it was Mama, Mom, not Mama, she literally is in the beginning. And that's it. She's gone. Bye bye. So long, so well. Never appears again. Terrible. Terrible story. Okay, could have had potential, could have, but no. It should have been focusing on that mother and son dynamic. But speaking of family dynamics, we have Mashal. Now, this is another one where I just recommend reading or watching the anime, okay? And I think no matter which one you watch or read it in, whatever, you will enjoy it. It's a funny, funny manga. It has its heartfelt moments, but for the most part, it is a comedy, right? Because it's sort of like One Punch Man if it didn't drag on, okay? Look, One Punch Man, in my opinion, is just dragging on at this point, okay? I'm not just, like, I'm not interested in anything that's happening in that story. Masho, I feel it lasts long enough that you don't get disappointed, that you're not frustrated, that you're not like, oh, this is so boring, or it's the same joke over and over again. Look, it is, but it, it's effective, right? It doesn't feel like it's being dragged out, in my opinion. And so I think Masho, funny story. I, I think you should read it because it got a couple chuckles out of me. Even some hearty laughs. Even in when I already read them in the manga, you know, with season two, I, I still laughed at the same joke. So, clearly, no matter which version you watch, I recommend just getting into Mashal. You won't regret it. It isn't just like that opening, okay? The opening is good, I get it, alright? I know you love the opening, but it's more than that, so read! And speaking of reading, let's talk about One Piece. Now, One Piece is long, right? It is long. But it's one of the things where if you actually took the time to read it or watch it, personally, I would rather you read it, you will love it. You will love it. You will love One Piece, all right? Because you don't get bored with the things you love. You don't get bored with, you know, just like going through emotions. No, One Piece is good and it's good for a reason. There's a reason why it's most popular. I mean, obviously Dragon Ball is easily the most popular work of fiction ever, but 
if we're talking like out of the big three, right? Between it, Bleach, and Naruto, I feel like One Piece, especially more in the West, has been gaining a lot more popularity, especially thanks to the live action show, I'd say. That I think that One Piece is probably the greatest. Uh, one of the greatest works of fiction I've ever read. That's just my opinion. I love every character, okay? Well, I mean, there are instances where I do get annoyed with Sanji and Brooke, but overall, I still love them. They're, they're still great. They still have their moments of greatness, so I don't want those weird moments to take away from that outside of Thriller Bark. That's the only one where I just hold it against Sanji so much. But outside of that, uh, you know... I mean, I get it, bro. You know, Sanji, you know, you do you, man. You know? But, <laughs> what do I even say? I'm recording this on 5.32 in the morning. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Point being, um, Sanji's good. The Straw Hats are good. Luffy is probably my favorite protagonist of all time. Right? Luffy is so great. I think hating Luffy at any point is a red flag. Um, so, you know... Uh, ladies, uh, men, uh, whatever, whoever you're into, if you'd be like, hey, you read One Piece? Oh, yeah, I read One Piece. Oh, do, do you like Luffy? If they say they hate Luffy, the red flag, red flag, red flag moment. But, uh, yeah, no, this latest chapter got me crying over a, ro a robot, <laughs> which I'm not surprised about because, like, I mean, I cried over a ship, you know, I cried over a boat, you know, One Piece. A One Piece made me cry over a a boat. Like you gotta, you gotta think about that. like a boat. A boat. <laughs> a boat. You know. Uh, One Piece is great. But as for the other big three, now Bleach. I'm currently reading. Okay. So I will see what I feel about Bleach. As for Naruto, I remember watching the anime, and I remember not liking Naruto too much when I was younger. But I do plan on reading Naruto and Boruto after bleach so that's how we're doing that and i'll let you know what i think about the big three whenever i catch up to bleach and naruto slash boruto so that'll be fun i i think maybe going back to stories that are finished uh dr stone dr stone i would recommend i think dr stone my main issue is with the main antagonist and who or what they're revealed to be I'm not a big fan of what the antagonist, like the main central antagonist, or a thing to have even caused all that which happened on with the story. I'm not a big fan of. Okay, I I don't like it. That's what I'm gonna say. I don't like the main antagonist. Okay, and I kind of feel like the ending kind of cops out the sacrifices made because they do a little something something. With uh, the new technology that they get. But everything up until that ending. And I'm not saying the ending is bad. I think it's it's good. You know, or okay. Everything until then. You know, the journey, not the destination. Is beautiful. I really love the characters in this story. And I highly recommend Dr. Stone. Don't want to get into more than just that. Now, this recording is currently 23, almost 24 minutes in, so let's try to speed it up a little bit here. Um, Rui Dragon, I dropped it at the moment because I'm just waiting for the chapters to build up, so that's neat. Spike's Family, the current story that was going on, it was a flashback. I liked it, it was sweet, it was heartwarming, but I kind of just want to get back to like the main things. Obviously, that flashback did give us details on other characters within the story, which I do appreciate that, you know. But overall, uh, could have done without it, personally, maybe. That's just how I feel. It's, I wouldn't necessarily call it filler because it did give us some important details, again, on characters that we know of in the story. But overall, I would say it was okay. It was, it was good. It was sweet, okay? The ending, a little depressing, but also sweet at the end. So uh, hopefully, you know, Spikes finally just keeps it up. It's, it's a good story. And um, yeah, I mean... I just want to see more of, of Lloyd, though, and Yor, especially Yor. I feel like Yor doesn't have a specific overarching goal in mind. Like, like Lloyd has a goal, right? Like, Lloyd has an overarching goal of dealing with this main bad guy. But I don't feel like Yor has that. And I feel like Yor needs something that is, like, like something she can look forward to. 
you know, rather than just playing a piece in Lloyd's mission, if that makes sense. Okay, so, yeah, there's that. Monsters, pretty good. It had an anime adaptation, so go watch that. I would recommend the anime adaptation. Um, what else do we have here to really speed run through? Hmm, nothing else. Uh, so we'll just get to, like, the final two manga that I want to discuss in uh, detail. Oh, actually, I read me and Roboco. I did not read I didn't like it, so I dropped it. I'm gonna be honest. And my wife has no emotions. That one's like getting updated irregularly because translators just do not want to translate for that story. Like it's on its third translator right now. It's a weird story, that's for sure, but I do like the ever growing family dynamic of that story. It's a weird one though. It's really weird, so I would not recommend that one, personally. But hey, you know it's getting anime adaptation, so Maybe, maybe I'll watch that instead. I don't know. I'm not your I'm not your boss. You don't gotta listen to me. I'm just some loser in the, the heat. Like it's hot. And it's late. And I'm tired. And I wanna I just wanna kill uh Camus in Minecraft. Oh my god, this dude. Oh I'm losing my mind. But okay. Uh, getting on to the final two stories I want to talk about, though. Alright, so... Let's talk about... Uh, Kagurabachi. Now, Kagurabachi is 43 chapters in. And I know it was a big meme when the first chapter came out, which is insane. The first chapter came out and everyone already started dogging on it. Even, even me. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, that first chapter was funny. Every day... I keep these scars so I can wake up with fresh hatred. Come on. That 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 was funny, okay? That was funny. <laughs> okay, but, you know, despite this fake edgy boy being all fake edgy, he gets his own found family. He's a good kid. He's a good guy, you know? And I think overall, good story. Highly recommend. The first villain was good. And then, like, that was so good. It was great, even. Perfect. And then, like, you had the second major villain. Oh, my goodness. Perfect. Honestly, the villains are so good. Like, our main character, Chihiro, I, I feel like he's a good character, too. Don't get me wrong. And how he bounces off of the first two antagonists, very good. But that said, I want more from him. Okay? I want more from him, you know, because I already know he's a good guy. Okay? I don't need him to be all fake edgy because he's a good guy. He's basically a dad. He's a good dad. Okay, he's an amazing dad. He's an amazing father. Does not have kids. They're all adopted, but the, 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 he's still a great dad. Great dad. Great, amazing dad. Okay? Great guy. Great, amazing guy. Love him. He's great. Awesome. Okay? He literally toured, told a broken sword, uh, yo, lock in, okay? <laughs> Which is funny to me. But, um, I would like more from him. You know? That said, though, he's still an amazing character. The story's amazing. Don't let the the hour one memes distract you from the fact that this is one of the best new gen stories being told right now and if you're missing it it's a real shame okay oh but finally we have made it to the final story manga i've been reading that i've been wanting to talk about i've been undead on luck now look i know the beginning turns a lot of people away i don't get i don't blame you guys hey you know, if you feel like that beginning portion just really mess with you guys, that you don't like what the beginning of Undead Unluck was, hey, I don't blame you. You know, that's perfectly fair. But I will say that that beginning portion, if that is the thing that turned you off, then you are missing out again on one of the best new gen stories being told right now, okay? The best way I can summarize it, is that it's kind of like in two parts, sort of like Chainsaw Man. Actually, scratch that. I want to save Chain. I'm gonna save Chainsaw Man for last. I think I forgot to talk about it. I think I did. So, uh, yeah, we'll we'll talk about Chainsaw Man later. But it's basically separated into two parts. Okay, it's not explicitly said it's in two parts, but I I basically say it's two parts. Okay, because you have like the first half of the story, and then you have everything that happens after that major midpoint. I would say, and the the pain you will feel from this first half is unbearable in a good way in a good way it's sad happy thoughts whereas the second half i've seen a lot of people not like it so much 
But I feel like if you don't like it, the second half, then I just think you're silly, right? Because this is what it was all like. Everything from the part one was all leading up to what happens in part two. And yeah, I get people don't like the idea of like a whole, like, you know, we don't know if it's going to be this case, but, you know, it, it's leaning towards it of it being like the ultimate good, perfect ending. Okay. And I understand people don't want that. I understand people hate the idea of like, oh, it's just perfect. But that perfection, that potential good ending where everyone is happy and well was earned. Okay. It was earned because of the actions that have been taken during that first part. So please, I, I understand that beginning, you know, may be hard to get through for some people. But I legitimately, and I, and I mean this. Undead Unluck is worth the read, okay? So please, please, if you haven't already, please read Undead Unluck. I beg of you. Uh, okay, now we're going to talk about Chainsaw Man. Final one, for real this time, okay? So, Chainsaw Man. Chainsaw Man. I mean, he's back, you know? We thought we saw him long gone in part one, but nope, he's back. And uh, no, he was kind of turned into it when he saw his effectively sister uh, decapitated and served on a plate of sushi. Ooh, delicious. <laughs> now, I don't think that the characters that were provoking him into this form truly understood what they were dealing with. Like, now they lost the concept of ears. Imagine just one day waking up, no ears. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like these morons were like, yeah, we're going to provoke this guy, and we're going to get him to into super, super scary transformation, and and now they're dying for it. Which, part of me is sad, all right? Look, here's the thing about Denji, okay? This, this is my own, like, little character analysis. Denji, you can't help but feel so terrible for him. Because he's been used all of his life. All of his life, from since birth to where he is right now, he is being used. And he doesn't deserve it. He deserves a good life, a happy life. But because of his, well, connection to Pochita and becoming Chainsaw Man, he it is like this never-ending curse of tragedy and horrible things happen to him. And, you know, for a majority of the fandom that I've seen, people understand this, right? But I've seen people make fun of it and make jokes about it because, in my personal opinion, I don't think you can truly understand Denji as a character if you haven't even lived one aspect of it or have experienced one tragedy of it or at least, like, did your research. You know, obviously there's memes and, and hey, you know, it's okay to make fun of anything. I'm, you know, hey, I make jokes about anything. I don't care. But... I don't feel like all of it is jokes. I feel like people don't treat it correctly because the fact of the matter is, you know, men essay is real. It, it is real. And on uh, the media, it's it's shown as a joke. Like the boys season four had it as a joke. I think like t twice, right? I mean, the second time it was more like him being victim blame Huey, but whatever. Point being is that like it's treated as a joke, but, uh, but Fujimoto doesn't treat it as a joke. And it's kind of upsetting seeing all these horrible things happen to Denji. And I, I just really want him to have a, a happy life. Like, I've seen this character grow from chapter one to where we are now. And, and I just, like, like, I'm so tired of just seeing this poor kid constantly being dragged through the, through the dirt. You know, just because he just wants to live a peaceful life. But because of everything that's happened to him. He's like, like he's dependent on being Chainsaw Man, or he's dependent on other people, or certain needs and wants that he's just like, it's it's horrible. It's it really is like, you know, it it's kind of terrible, you know, having those types of experiences where people just like use you and like it's not just oh they just use you and that's it. Like it affects the relationships that you have with people going forward, and, like the way you approach scenarios and all that. It's it's terrible. Like. Like, you wish you could just change it all back. And, like, but like it happened. And, you know, now you got to live with the consequences because of the things that were done to you, you now do onto others. Or 
or at the very least like you shun other people and whatnot and in denji's case you know the, the poor kid he's just he's he's just going through it constantly and, and, and it makes me upset you know then Den, denji's protagonist is the one i feel the most sorrow for because he's a character that i think truly deserves happiness so this is what i think this is my theory this is my theory okay so Nayuta's not dead. I don't think that head that was in the sushi platter was her head, okay? This is my opinion, okay? My opinion is that she's perfectly alive and well. Maybe the idea is that her powers changed when she was about to be attacked by the crowd. So maybe it was something like... Because obviously her powers were based upon how she looks down on people, right? With Makimo, so easy. But with Nayuta, it's not so easy, right? She just doesn't view people under her in that sort of way so in my personal opinion i think her powers are going to change into that because she cares so much about denji like there's she's like how do i say this like denji for her is the only really meaningful person in her life that anyone who isn't denji to her is beneath him essentially and that's how she's able to control people that's my take on it now i maybe i'm misremembering this but we have seen her read Denji's mind, right? And here's my theory, okay? Here's my little theory, crazy theory. But we know that in part one, power was like, hey, you know, find me, find the blood devil, turn me into power, what, you know, all that, all that, right? And now obviously Denji still has not done that yet. But this is where I think it's gonna, it's gonna go crazy, okay? Nayuta is gonna find the blood devil. And through using Denji's memories and all that, She's going to turn power back into power. And then we're going to get this little, little sister duo going on here. And they're going to they're gonna help Denji. And they're going to calm him down. And they're going to revert him back into himself. Okay. That's what I think is going to happen. And in the meantime, I definitely think Asa Yoru is going to fight Denji. Okay. I do think that's going to happen. She's going to fight Chainsaw Man. And... I think she's going to lose, okay? I don't think she's going to die, obviously, but she's going to lose, okay? Because Denji is his. And so, with all that being said, that is my little Chainsaw Man theory. I think Nayuta will be with power because we, we've already established she can read minds. And I do think that her powers will change to that, how she views Denji over other people. I think that will be the case. And, yeah, because I, I don't think she's dead. And, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. Because at the end of the day, you know, the one really suffering right now is, is Denji. Because he's just, he's just going through it. Like, and uh, it's horrible. It really is. So, hopefully things end up good in Chainsaw Man. Personally, I, I really hope it's all good by the end of the story. But, for right now, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for listening to this long rant. Because <laughs> that's what it is. It's a long rant <laughs> of things I've read, but... I hope you enjoyed. Uh, with all that being said, though, please take care of yourselves and uh, have an amazing day. I'm gonna go take a nap and then upload this video. <laughs> Peace.